Honor of you here tonight for the Sea Athletes Award Banquet. This is sponsored by our Northeastern Booster Club in cooperation with the NCCS Athletic Department. Um, we have a guest speaker tonight, and the most, usually I don't get nervous, but the most nervous part I was was pronouncing this gentleman's last name. <laughs> when I saw him walk in the door, I said, I'm definitely not going to make a mistake saying this guy's name. <laughs> then I shook his hand, and for sure I won't say this guy's name wrong. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'd like to start off, we'll have the blessing for the meal from Mr. Keo. Please. Well, Father, we ask you to please bless our gathering here tonight. Thank you for all the dedication, all the work that's been uh, put into this evening. Lord, especially we thank you for the accomplishment of these students here. And may you bless the food and bless our time together now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
this is no sauna. Okay? Our guest speaker tonight has both international and local ties when it comes to his involvement in the world of sports. Montreal native Michel Vallier starred from 1982 to 1985 as the goalie for some of Glassburg State's most success successful hockey teams. He capped off his collegiate career by leading Glassburg State to the NCAA Final Four Tournament at the conclusion of the 84-85 season. His efforts during that season were rewarded when he was named to the NCAA Division III All-American team. It is possible that his name and face could be familiar to some of you here tonight. You may recognize him from his picture plaque on the wall just before you enter the ice arena at the Plasterwood State Field Fieldhouse in a display featuring the past Cardinal All-Americans. But his hockey career did not end when he left Plasterwood State. It would lead him all over the world and see him compete with or against just about every major international hockey player in today's game. Players like Seiko Kobo, Max Sedin, Serge Federhoff, Dominic Hasek, and Eric Windrows are, are, are but a few of the many hockey players our guest speaker would encounter during his years in the international and world arenas. In 1992, he was selected to compete for France in the Hockey World Championship Tournament in pro Czechoslovakia. The first of five successive world championship tournaments for our guest speaker as a member of the French national team. But his biggest accomplishment in sports was achieved in 1994 when he was selected to represent France at the 17th Winter Olympic Games in Lillehammer, Norway. He was certainly put to the test during the Olympics when he was called upon to start a goal against the powerhouse teams from Sweden and the Czech Republic. He has spent the last 10 years playing professionally in Europe, most recently for the Nuremberg Ice Tigers in Germany. In addition to playing hockey, he also has his own goaltender school in Bordeaux, France, that is annually attended by as many as 50 goalies, ages youth to adult. And when he is not playing or teaching hockey, he can be found in the television broadcast booth on the Eurosport and the PFI French television stations as a hockey color commentator analyst with over 150 NHL World Championship and Olympic broadcasts to his credit. We were very pleased when he graciously accepted our invitation to be with us tonight. Please welcome Collegiate Final Four World Championship and Olympic Hockey Goalie, Michel Vallier. So, after six months of intense demand, 
Santa Claus finally brought me my first pair of goalie pads at the age of three. <laughs> Good old Santa Claus. I already knew that my only desire and obsession was to become a goaltender. I am thankful to my parents who introduced me to a sporting life and also supported me, not by pushing me or trying to achieve their unaccomplished dreams through me, but just by being present, by being there, and the encouragements of my parents were a success for my career. Goaltending is considered by most specialists not only the toughest position in ice hockey, but in sports. It is well known in hockey that you win games because of the forwards and you lose them because of the goaltending. <laughs> goaltending is a result-oriented position. If forward can make a mistake, defenseman can cover up for him. If defenseman makes a mistake, goaltender can cover up for him. But when the goalie makes a mistake, usually he ends up in a goal. But to me it was, and it still is, the greatest position in sports. Routine does not exist when you play goal. A soft and easy shot to stop might have a weird bounce and trickle by you. Or maybe the hardest shot in hockey, a screenshot that might end up in your glove in the last minute of the game to seal the, the victory for the team. Sports can be rewarding in many different ways, and ice hockey brought me an education. By enrolling in Plattsburgh State University, my biggest challenge wasn't the athletics or the studies, but the language barrier. I remember walking around campus with my pocketbook dictionary, not understanding a single word of English. That's when my team that my teammates nicknamed me Maybe. Well, I used to say maybe all the time so I wouldn't get myself into trouble. <laughs> what time is it? Maybe. <laughs> what are you doing later on tonight? Maybe. <laughs> they had a lot of fun with that in my freshman year. So like all recruits going to college, it meant that I was at some point in the early stages of my life a little all-star on my neighborhood rink. But I quickly realized in college and I quickly learned that patience and determination would be the key factors to prepare a professional career. Sometimes it would take months, even a season, before a young player would get a chance to prove himself. In my case, it took two years. Two years of frustrations and hard work. But believe me, when the chance came and the time was right, I was ready. I was ready to meet up with the challenge and on my way to be selected as an All-American. During my four years of professional hockey with the Los Angeles Kings and the Calgary Flames organization, and sitting in the dressing room next to veterans with faces scarred by decades of pucks and high stick, I quickly realized that life can change with a simple score of a game. Of course, for some people, hockey is a hobby, it's a fun sport, but for the prof professionals playing the sport, it means a living and feeding a family. Meanwhile, I was selected to go play in the, to participate in the European tournament. And unexpectedly, this trip had a major impact on my future. Traveling to Europe for the first time was a very fascinating experience. But after a very unpleasant incident in between a French custom agent and the team management, I already dislike the French attitude from France. Not from Quebec, we're more like North Americans. But I already decided French attitude and the French behaviors, and I promised myself I would never go to this country again. Never say never. Well, three years later, I was representing France in the World Championships in Czechoslovakia, in Prague, Czechoslovakia. And I was having tears of emotions hearing the national anthem after an international game. When you win, they play the national anthem and France had just won, so it was a very emotional moment for, for me especially because we beat Canada that, uh, that tournament, so I was playing against my, my own country. And if they would have asked me, I think, to wear the French beret 
and the bread, the French bread under my arm, I would have done it. Maybe I wouldn't have liked it, but I would have done it. <laughs> After two short seasons of playing in France, I was honored to receive the French citizenship because in Canada, they allow you to own a second passport. And in my mind, to represent an institution like the student athletes did this year here in the country is probably the greatest honor an athlete can have. My six years with the French national team were very rewarding in many ways. It brought me the highest quality of international hockey to the World Championships and the 1994 Winter Olympics in, uh, in Lillehammer, Norway. The unforgettable trips across Czechoslovakia and Russia and all across Europe were a priceless experience that made me appreciate and respect the different cultures and races. I have to say that this year our team in Germany, I uh, play in Newburgh, Germany in, uh, in the suburb of uh, Munich, and uh, since Russia and Czechoslovakia opened up uh, to the rest of the world, we had, out of 23 players, we had 10 Russians, 10 Czechs, two Swedes, and one Canadian. So it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite an, uh, an experience to, to play over there. Unfortunately, I cannot play professional hockey forever. And now at the age of 36, entering my 14th season, I will have to prepare to meet another major challenge, the one of the career transition. For the student athletes that are being honored tonight, as well as for me, those next few years will be vitally important. In closing, I would like to warmly congratulate you. And looking out here tonight, I can see that everybody's on the right track for success. And remember, in sports, as well as in life, you never have to settle for second best. Oh, sometimes you may fall short, but you never have to strive to settle to strive for second best. Thank you very much. And Josie Hill, 
Luke's come up? No? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, I wish you'd go. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm a in-betweener here. <laughs> Michelle. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, on behalf of uh, the athletic department and the coaches attending tonight, myself, I'd like to welcome the parents, uh, our coaches again, and senior athletes and guests. Uh, thank you for being here this evening. And of course, this is a very special opportunity to honor our senior athletes. And appreciate it extended to our boosters for organizing this event. I'd like to introduce the coaches that are here tonight, and uh, if you stand up, please, uh, when I do, do so. Of course, to my left here, our own master of ceremonies, uh, Frank Dumas, and he is our, uh, what we call you now, master coach. Uh, he coaches four sports at the school, and soccer, basketball, and softball.
and we wish you success in your future endeavors. But remember, <coughs> success always comes from the inside. As our guest speaker alluded to a minute ago, the second best is not good enough. All strive for first. You should re remind yourselves from time to time that you are what you aspire to become, not what you are now. You are what you do with your mind. It is not the environment from which you come that necessarily determines what you become. While environment may be a factor, it is you, the quality of your mind, and the determination of your will, of your will that decides your future more than any other factor. Some of you will ask, how does one go about achieving his or her goals and making one's dream become a reality? First, always reflect upon your athletic experiences and how they intensified your values. These experiences could have given you more confidence and optimism about yourself and others. Second, take responsibility for your own life. You must not live your life trying to find out whose fault it is should something go wrong in your life. People are always blaming their, circum uh, their circumstances. We do it in athletics. For example, I didn't play well because the weather was bad. We lost because the officials called a bad game. We've all heard that these are circumstantial excuses. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, make them. Third, be an optimist. <coughs> the pessimist sees difficulty. The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. See the glass as being half full rather than half empty. See the world as a place with limitless opportunities rather than a place where obstacles prevent you from achieving your goals. I'm not sure whether these are the best of times or the worst of times. But the one thing I'm sure, this is the only time you have. So make the most of it by listening to positive music, reading positive books, watching positive videos and television, engaging in positive dialogue, and above all, by continuing to strive for excellence. Fourth, learn to transform anger into positive motivation and a sense of empowerment. Make your model to get better and not bitter in that pursuit of excellence. Focus on your goals, not your hardships. Never doubt yourself because once you begin to, all too often, that negative perception becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Fifth, Whatever task you undertake, perform it as your best level. Not only will someone be watching you, but it is comforting to know you did your best. No matter what you become, do something to make your life better for the next generation. Success comes from the inside. So we hope that your experiences in athletics at Northeastern has given you a foundation to build success and the ability to be decisive so your decisions are backed by personal commitment. On behalf of the coaches, the administration, the Booster Club, myself, and all the sons here tonight, we would like to congratulate you, our senior athletes, and your fellow classmates, on your outstanding years at Northeastern Clinton. Your accomplishments on and off the athletic field and all across the very best public relations in our school. And we, of course, are most grateful for that. Your achievements in the class of 1998 and as individuals will long be remembered by all of us and certainly produced our race for you, your teammates and your family. Uh, we sincerely hope that in some small way your participation in athletics here at Northeastern has helped you become a better person.
Okay, lastly, I would like to thank members of both of both for their assistance here in providing and maintaining an excellent athletic program at Northeastern Clinton. And at this time, I have a, a presentation. At a recent board meeting, our administration, Board of Education, School Administration, uh, presented a resolution certificate to members of the Booster Club. And for those of you who were not aware of it, I would like to, well, actually, uh, the one they did present had a mistake in it, and uh, I guess I'm not so sure it had a frame on it. But, uh, this was sent down from the district office, and uh, I was asked to present it uh, officially to uh, Tom Marlowe. So, Tom, would you come up, please? what it says on here for those of you who maybe didn't see it on Calvin Vision or see the presentation by, by uh, our administration. It is signed by each board member, myself, uh, Bob Musso, and Kevin Holland and our principal. Whereas the officers and members of the Northeastern Clinton, Clinton Central School Booster Club have invested countless hours working to help the school district and the athletic department by enhancing school facilities and programs including the purchase of equipment and uniforms for student athletes. And whereas the Board of Education, the Director of Athletics, the School Administration gratefully welcome and appreciate the efforts of the NCCS Booster Club, and whereas the actions of the Booster Club's dedicated volunteers have provided the students of Northeastern Clinton Central School District with school and community spirit and valuable leadership. Therefore, be it resolved on the fourth day of May, 1998, the Northeastern Clinton uh, Central School Board of Education, School Administration, and School District gratefully acknowledge the tireless efforts, commitment, and service given unself unselfishly for the benefit of the students attending Northeastern Clinton Central School District. Thank you very much. Oh, 
right now, all the lady athletes line up in the back there. Okay, when we call your name, if you would stop right here, right by this little white table, and uh, face the camera. Rose, if you can line up out, out the better.
Margo is not here tonight. She was in bowling one year and was the most improved player in bowling. Paula Chapman is also not here tonight. She was bowling three years, most valuable player in bowling one year, and the sportsmanship award in bowling one year. also not here tonight. Basketball two years, two CDAC championships in basketball, two section seven championships, two North Country Regional Championships, regional quarter finalists, and 12th in New York State for Class C. Soccer three years, basketball manager two years, captain of soccer, most valuable player soccer one year, most improved player soccer one year, three CBAC championships in soccer, two undefeated seasons, two section seven championships, two North Country regional championships, state quarter finalists one year, state quarter final champion one year, 1997 state finalists, ranked second in New York State, class C, all tournament soccer sportsmanship award at the state finals, Local soccer sportsmanship three years, and she was a Division One and CBAC All Conference All Star this year. Congratulations! Lisa Marlow. Basketball two years, softball four years. She was captain in basketball and softball. Most valuable player, basketball one year, softball three years. Most improved player in softball one year. Two CDAC championships in basketball, two section seven championships, two North Country regional championships, regional quarter finalists, ranked both in New York State, class C. Earned a varsity letter in softball for four consecutive years. She was an honorable mention all-star one year, and a division one all-star one year and a CBAC exceptional senior game for both basketball and softball. Congratulations to this <laughs> Stacy Miller. <laughs> Soccer three years, basketball three years, track two years, softball two years. Captain of soccer and basketball. Most valuable player in soccer two years, basketball one year. Most improved player in basketball one year. White letter and award two years in soccer, basketball, and softball. She's the only senior girl to earn a varsity letter in four different sports this year. Three CDAC championships in soccer, two undefeated seasons, two section seven championships, two North Country Regional Championships, state quarter finalist one year. State quarterfinal champion one year, 1997 state finalist. Ranked second year at state class C. All tournament soccer sportsmanship award the state finals, local soccer sportsmanship award three years. Division one and CBAC all conference all star one year. Honorable mention all star two years. Three CBAC championships in basketball with one undefeated season, three section seven championships, one section seven overall championship, two North Country regional championships, regional quarter finalists, ranked 12th in New York state class C. CDAC Honorable Mention All-Star one year, and Press Republican Honorable Mention All-Star one year. CDAC Exceptional Senior Game in Basketball. New York State Public High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete in Basketball 1996. CDAC All Academic Honors in the Fall of 97, Winter of 98, and Spring of 98. And a grade point average of 90% for every varsity sports season that she has participated in. Congratulations, Stacey.
Great second year. State Class C, Alternate Soccer Sportsmanship Award at the State Finals, Local Soccer Sportsmanship Award for three years. Earned a varsity letter in soccer. Oops. No, oh, that's the next one, sorry. Congratulations, <laughs>
and the Eagle State uh, quarter finalist, uh, finalist in the uh, in soccer in '98. Eric Bombardier. Two years, track for three years. The Section 7 uh, champion in track, 1998. He earned the Matt Smith Award in track, one year. He was a CBAC All Academic athlete for the spring of 1998. He also was a New York State Public High School Athletic Association Scholar athlete for two years. Congratulations. Great right, cast time uh, here tonight. Basketball two years. He's the most valuable player in basketball one year. Uh, CBAC exceptional senior, 1998. CBAC basketball champion, 98. And CBAC honorable mention, uh, one year. 98. Jason Colon. <laughs> track two years. Section 7 track champion for 1998. Congratulations. <laughs> Paul Cross. country one year, the basketball manager for girls basketball for two years, did a fantastic job. Track, one year. Congratulations to Paul. Pat <laughs> Buell. Soccer, one year. Bowling two years, track three years. Multiple player in bowling one year. Here at the White Pen Award in soccer, bowling, and track. He holds the school district district discus record of 130 feet six inches. Established that uh, this spring. He was a CBAC soccer champion, 98. Section seven track champion, 98. Congratulations, Pat. Tyson Dumas. Soccer, two years. Basketball, two years. Baseball, two years. Most valuable player in soccer, one year. Most improved player in basketball, one year. Here in the White Hen Award, two years. Same three sports, soccer, basketball, baseball. CBAC is set. Exceptional senior. Uh, he was a goalkeeper for the soccer team and posted 11 shutouts as a goalkeeper in 1998. <laughs> Along with 11 shutouts, you can imagine he was a CBAC soccer champion uh, for that year. And CBAC honorable mention. Also, congratulations, Tyson. Soccer two years. He was a CBAC second team all star, CBAC soccer champion, 97. CBAC all academic in the fall of 97. Congratulations. In your battle. Basketball one year, golf for three years. Most improved player in golf one year. And also the CBAC basketball champion. 98. Congratulations. Man.
Peter Thiel. <laughs> baseball, four years. He's the captain of the baseball team for three years. The most valuable player in baseball for two years. He is a press, press Republican first team all-star, CBAC all-star. He uh, posted a no-hitter. He's a left-handed pitcher. Posted one no-hitter in his career. He, uh, this year he had a batting average of 525 to 49. Uh, he also uh, will be attending a Division I school, Liberty College in Virginia, a full scholarship. Congratulations to Peter. Captain of the bowling team for two years, 
most valuable player in bowling one year. Earned the White End Award. State qualifier in bowling for two years. State bowling finalist one year, 1996. And CBAC uh, All Academic, the winner of uh, 98. New York State Public High School Association Scholar Athlete for two years. And NCCS High Honor Student for three sports seasons. Congratulations.
as one thing you seniors can carry on in life and work together. Believe in your teammate. Don't try to do his job or your job will suffer. Maximum achievement is based on the hard work and sacrifice that you put in before the season. Remember, the coach always wants the best for the team. Athletics is only a game. Everyone loses, not only you, and defeat isn't fatal or final unless you let it be that way. The first and most important thing to learn is attitude from now on and the rest of your life. There's always going to be a way to get your assignment done, even if your problem is bigger, faster, and stronger than you are. Take any one of these items and apply it to your world, your job, your family, your nation, and it will still hold true. Think what a better world, a better community we would have if we all got together to practice these qualities every day at 3.30 and then apply them on Friday night and the rest of the week as well. Seniors, we live in a world that needs hard work, teamwork, sacrifice, and trust in our teammates. And remember, no matter how old you are, it will be your attitude, not the number of wins and losses, that will determine your quality of life. Mr. Frisbee gave me this, and I cherished this for years, and I felt that he Share this with me, I will share it with you seniors. This gentleman got us through the ice storm. You should have seen the rescheduling this man went through. All we had to worry about was one team. This guy had to worry about, I believe, 12 or 15 teams in winter sports from modified varsity. He had to worry about everyone. You know, we're trying to struggle and get our teams back ready to get in league play. We had teams in contention, you know, and boy, we all were right in, but he still did bark back. He handled it like a real professional. We got through the basketball season. And what happens? We have a flood now in spring sports. Okay. We, in this district, closed for a week. We fall behind in spring sports. Again, everybody's calling, can we start? No, nope, you can't. And he goes by the rules, and I believe in that now. He goes by the rules, you know, show you enough practice, make sure everything's done right, and it's the proper way to go. Maybe a few years back, I went to the green one. I might have been the first one and I said, listen, Ray, you know, she, she originally got some practice, but no, make sure they have no practice. That's the way to be. And again, during the flood time, we, uh, he got honored for being athletic director of the year. Well, naturally, everybody's really not paying attention to different things. That sports wasn't a priority because of what's going on at the public. You know, we had uh, CBAC coaches of the year, Mr. Gilroy, Mr. Hawksby, Mr. Landry, you know, and, and they all got their, their praise rightly deserved. This guy is all our bosses, and he takes care of all the little things, and he got this put in the paper, and a lot of us missed it. State Athletic Administrator, Honor Frisbee. The New York State Athletics Administration Association at its annual conference and award banquet announced that North Northeastern Clinton Central School, Rick Frisbee, was honored as the Chapter 7 winner for 1998. The Chapter Athletic Administrator Award is given to a member in good standing who has shown evidence of devotion and idealism to athletics through the New York State Athletic Association. Frisbee has been a teacher at Northeastern Clinton Central School for 31 years.
He is currently an active official in both soccer and basketball for over 15 years. He serves on the executive committee of the Champlain Valley Athletic Conference. Rick, personally, and from everybody in the community, we thank you. Coaches, we got together and we have you a card and a little gift here. I'll present this to you. Okay, uh, right now I'd like to have uh, Mr. Tom Marlowe come up, the president of the Booster Club. Say a few words, please. Members just wanted me to say, uh, who wants to make a motion to adjourn this meeting? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they enjoy most during the year. But no, I'd like to thank the group from, from the bottom of my heart for the year we've had. We've had a great year. Um, we just out some money. There was money in the uh, account before we started. Uh, there's not so much right now, but uh, we put, put a lot of money into the board this year. I want to thank Rick for his help and assistance. Uh, Bob also told me tonight that the uh, officials association called him tonight. I wanted to make sure that Lisa and my daughter was graduating this year so they wouldn't have to listen to me next year. So, <laughs> I, I can't hear that. I don't understand that. But no, tonight's a senior night, and uh, I've seen a lot of you kids grow up from third grade in sports right up on through. I yelled at a lot of you kids, whatever, but you know, I'm proud of you. Most clubs are proud of you, and please continue to do what you've in the past and in your future. Best of luck.
I know how proud you parents must be sitting out there tonight. Because I can honestly say I am certainly proud to be associated with Northeastern Clinton Central School and the students that go to that school, especially our seniors. This group of students that we see here tonight is a group that uh, you know, I don't see in my office every day. <laughs> <laughs> this is, Mrs. Rascal sits over there in my office and she can testify that there are some I see every day. <laughs> but they don't come from this group. I've often said that the reputation of a school depends upon its athletes. You know, we have a lot of kids who win scholarships and uh, their academic successes are tremendous. You don't see that in the paper. You don't hear people talking about that in the community. What do you hear? Wow, the soccer team. Wow, the basketball team. Did you see that game the other That's the kind of thing you hear in the community. That's how a school's reputation is built. And we at Northeastern have a tremendous reputation among the other schools in the area and among the citizens in our community. And for that, we certainly want to thank you. I also want to thank, while I'm thanking tonight, I sincerely want to thank the Booster Club. Every year I'm exceptionally pleased to be invited, my wife and I, to this, to this activity. And I was especially honored to be asked to sit at the head table tonight. I don't think I should have been at the head table. But just like the rest of the year, where they're in the background, uh, you know, the president, I think, of the Booster Club should have been here at the head table with his wife, not me. But uh, they're in the background all the time just doing for, doing for, doing for, doing for our students. They've made our facilities look good. They've made you students look good. If I'm not mistaken, you know, Don said their, their treasury's done. Was it about $12,000? $20,000. $20,000 for uniforms this year? $20,000, $15,000 for uniforms to make new people look good. What an accomplishment by such a few number of people. Volunteers. And a lot of volunteers. And so, thank you very much. And personally, I want you to know that over the years, the Booster Club has saved me a great deal of money. This, this uh, Booster Club senior bank banquet is always around the first part of June. And it just so happens that my anniversary is June 1st. <laughs> Yesterday. You missed it this year. It cost me this year. <laughs> so usually I say to my little wife, dear, would you like to go off to dinner for our anniversary? <laughs> and she'll say, sure. I say, good, we'll go to the senior banquet. <laughs> Since I'm invited as a guest, it doesn't cost me anything. I want to thank the Booster Club. For that. <laughs> Sunday, I was watching some of the basketball game on television between the Chicago Bulls and uh, is it Indiana. I don't watch it an awful lot. Indiana, Indiana. And I saw Michael Jordan sitting on the bench. I don't remember if it was between quarters or if it was during a timeout, saying some, to some of the other players, I need you to go out there and score your two points or your four points so that we can be successful and we can win this championship. It wasn't the championship, it was the semifinals. But it allowed the Chicago Bulls to be in their six World Championship Series. Once again, leadership. Now I'm going to say to you seniors, you leaders of our school, I need you. Folks, we've been through a lot of crisis this year. It's been mentioned. The ice storm. 
the flood. I was sure when I heard the weather report that the school was, you know, the roof was going to blow off and we were going to have another emergency day. That didn't happen. But we do have another crisis, and that's among seniors. And I hate to say this at this occasion, but that's why I'm asking for your help. We have the possibility of anywhere between, I'm going to say, 20 to 25 seniors, that's almost as many as there are of you here tonight, who are not going to graduate. And they're not going to graduate because they just haven't done the work. Do you think you people who have been on these championship teams could have skipped practice, could have not done the work, could have not done all the tedious and the boring things that go along with developing your skills and still had championship teams? Wouldn't happen. You need to take those skills, and those ideals that you've learned from playing sports, use them yourself, and spread them to your teammates, your fellow seniors, and get them to work right now, at the end of the year, with only a week or two left, to accomplish their goal. They've been working, you all have been working 13 years to graduate as a senior. And now some of you are not going to make it just because you haven't done the work, not because you're not able. We heard people say tonight, don't ever settle for second best. If you don't graduate with your class, it's because you're second, settling for second best. I'm impressed with what you people have accomplished. I know that you can accomplish this goal need your help. I need you to go out to your classmates and say, come on, let's get this done. Let's be with us on the stage. In education, we don't have a lot of rewards. You know, you, you, don't, you don't see the fruits of your labor right off. But when you see seniors graduate, you see them go on to college, and you see them be successful, that's when you, you, you have your rewards, and you see your rewards. And we want to see that in a couple of weeks when you people graduate. I'm sure if the big game was coming, you wouldn't decide to skip practice. I hear that Friday is another <laughs> senior skip day. People, I'm telling you, you've got a lot of members of your class, and some of them are sit sitting in this audience tonight who cannot afford another skip day. They need to be there to practice. They need to be there to get their, their work done and to accomplish their goal. And I'm asking you for that help. Please. We want all of you and we want your classmates to graduate. One other thing I'm going to ask you. I've never got up in my soapbox before a senior <laughs> banquet, but I just feel I need to do it. You people tonight, coming up here accepting your awards, look so nice. This is such a dignified event. And graduation will soon be here. And graduation is becoming a very undignified event. We're getting the beach balls thrown around the stage. We're getting the squirt guns on the stage. We're getting all kinds of antics that go on on the stage. And it's not dignified. It's not in the true character of the students at Northeastern Clinton Central School. And I'm asking you for your help. You as class leaders can persuade, can lead by your example we can have, once again, a dignified graduation at Northeastern. I've had principals from other school districts tell me what a wonderful secret we have up here 
at Northeastern about the quality of our kids. We do have quality students. We have quality families. And our sports teams and everything in the school, I think, evolves around the family. We act like a family. And I certainly would not want you people to embarrass your family at graduation time. What a terrific group of seniors this has been. A terrific group. And I want people, when they come to your graduation, to see how terrific you can be. You know, I think you can leave two impressions. You can leave one that says, well, oh, finally, they're gone. We don't see them again. And you can leave the impression, oh my gosh, I hate to see that class graduate. They've been such nice kids. And you have been. Every one of you, as I look at you out here, have been tremendous students for the four years. So I hope you will use the skills that you have learned in athletics and you will use them throughout your life as all the other suggestions have been made here tonight. There's nothing more I don't think I can add to that. I hope when you leave Northeastern you'll remember us kindly and I hope that wherever you go you will support the youth athletes in your communities. It's meant a lot to you and I'm sure it's going to mean a lot to other kids as you get older. So again, thank you very much. I'm very proud of you. And uh, I hope to see you all in school the rest of the week. <laughs> thank you.